Am I the only one who thinks about Pantera every time I read this, the title of this book? I just keep thinking, hold your voice for war, use it for what it's for. Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, I will be talking about Voice of War by Zach Argyle, the first book in the Threadlight series. So this is one that I read on my Kindle. I'd had it for a while and with doing the whole mood reading thing, finally decided to just pop it in because it's quite short. It was a lot shorter than I thought it would be. Uh, and this was a really interesting book. Uh, I, I did like a lot about it, but I had some complaints as well. I came out with a pretty good rating, uh, mostly just because I enjoyed what it was doing. Uh, but so let's talk a bit more about Voice of War. So this book follows mostly the character Chris Valerian. We do have a couple of other characters which we'll talk about as well, but this is mostly Chris's story, and that's really what this first book focuses on. It does do some world building, uh, a fair amount of world building, uh, talking about like the, the what thread weaving is, uh, which is the ability to basically either push or pull uh, on threads, specifically like you have your core thread, which like attaches you to the world kind of, so like you can push or pull, like basically uh, jump higher or make yourself pull down more, so kind of affecting gravity. Uh, and those are the two basic things. So it, it felt kind of like a, a like simplified uh, Sanderson type of magic system, uh, kind of where we were going, but it was set up to be unique in its own ways. Uh, we learned about that. We learned uh, about some just different uh, areas um, and some really, really interesting types of land and creatures. Uh, there's this like really giant dark forest as things called chroma wolves and uh like these uh photospores which are like these plants that also give off light and light and color have quite a lot to do uh with the world that's being built so we do we do a fair amount of world building but what we're mostly focusing on is chris's story uh as a soon-to-be father and he's a high general uh in the city and uh is trying to uh, we're told at the beginning he's trying to track down the people called the Blood Thieves who were stealing the blood of thread weavers, so people who can use uh, thread light and do thread weaving, uh, because apparently that can uh, be used to kind of give other people like a feeling of that. And so we're told these things, we have the plot set up, but it's really more so about his experiences as a soon-to-be father and a father, uh, and him and his personal journey trying to protect his child. That's really the focus, and I think it worked, and I, I think it was important to do because without that very personal character-driven story, this is pretty much a setup book. Uh, but by really focusing more so on that story, uh, not setting everything up, it made it so that we're still telling, uh, it, it's it, not, not we, uh, Zach Argyle is still telling a compelling story, uh, and so we're still getting a, a good book even though uh, what we're doing is mostly getting ready for the bigger things to come. The way this book ends makes it pretty clear we're going to really get into the meat of it uh, in the next uh, couple of books. I believe this is going to be a trilogy. Uh, the second book is definitely out. The third book, I think, is coming out. I could be wrong on that. But I've heard that book two is a huge step up, uh, which I would hope for because despite the fact that I did enjoy this book, I definitely did have some flaws. There was one big thing, a uh, decision that a character made uh, early on that just didn't sit well uh, with me, and it was mostly fine with it. Uh, it did get explained a little bit more. Uh, and then otherwise, the other characters, there are really there are two other characters uh, we follow. One of them we start following fairly early on, which is Laurel, uh, and then we have a third character that's introduced later. Now, Laurel, uh, I, I didn't think was a bad character by any means, but is not really thoroughly characterized. Kind of makes decisions that don't make a lot of sense uh, and seem to be a bit wishy-washy with character development. The third character was really more of a transactional character where they don't seem to be particularly Im important to the, the story itself, but there are certain things that they need to do in order for the story to be built on. So I felt like it was very much a sliding scale of how well the characters were written, with Chris definitely being the best, Laurel having some issues, and then the, the third character, whose name I haven't even said, because I'm not going to lie, I, I can't remember uh, their name off the top of my head, because they just weren't particularly important. Um, uh, that character is kind of how it went. So I would definitely look for that to improve uh, going forward, but I still thought it accomplished uh, what it needed to accomplish and set up uh, what could be a really, really good second book. 
So at this point, I'm going to get into some spoilers and talk a little bit more of the specifics uh, of some of the things that uh, I, I thought worked well and, and things I thought didn't, uh, including uh, getting a little more specific about my, my issues with it and what they were. Uh, so from here, I'll be talking some spoilers. If you've not read the book, I'll have some timestamps where you can skip forward uh, past the spoiler section to kind of the summary final thoughts section. So make sure to check that out now uh, if you do not want spoilers. So uh, to just to, since I was just talking about kind of the issues I had, the first big thing I didn't particularly care for was the idea that after Chris kind of discovers the whole plot with the blood thieves uh, and the other high general jurius, he doesn't like tell anybody, send a messenger to the, you know, high emperor king guy, doesn't really do anything of that. He just immediately runs home, take care of his family, fine, fair, and I get that. But at no point, even after like assassins come to try and kill him, does he send any word where he could, you know, potentially get help and guards? This is specifically addressed, and it, it's kind of stated that he wasn't sure who he could really trust, and he wasn't sure if the other high general jurius had already, like, said things that were going to make him look bad. But unless it's being set up for, like, a massive, not very good twist in the later books, like, the... The Emperor could not have done more to, like, fully express that he very much is uh, friends with Chris and, like, would do anything for him. So the fact that he just at no point tells him, even when he has the opportunity to have a private conversation with him, doesn't say a single word about anything, I didn't really like. And I predicted that was going to be used as a huge uh, amount of impetus for the rest of the book. Where it's like, oh, now this has happened, now I'm going to look even more guilty, and now things are going to get out of control until it's too late and I can't tell them. That did pretty much happen, uh, where so many different things happened to make it worse and worse because he just didn't tell them. So using that kind of um, trope of like, oh, I can't tell them, but it's going to get worse later, that really annoyed me. And I thought it was fine, because like I said, it was addressed to an extent, and I think it was addressed well enough to not make it a huge flaw. Uh, but I still just can't help thinking that, like, come on, he could have could have said something. I uh, would have saved a lot of, of time and energy later on. Uh, and then with Laurel, my big issue with Laurel is, like I said, she wasn't characterized nearly as well as Chris. Uh, and early on, she's we have her character. We see maybe she's a little reckless, but uh, she you know, seems to really care about her family, including her grandfather, who she's all talking about, like, oh, she's going to be so sad when he goes off on the gale and apparently means die, and then her, you know, younger brother, uh, who is, uh, like, disabled and has, you know, can't really do a whole lot, and so she's just talking to them loving, and then all of a sudden, like, she gets in a fight with her grandfather and, like, storms out and, like, the weak men trying to control me, you can't control me. I'm like, where did that come from? Uh, it seems to kind of flip-flop like that again, where her character, I don't, I don't really understand uh, what the author is going for with her character, and so I'm hoping that the characterization gets better uh, in the second book, because uh, it seems like she's still going to be very important, but I didn't really fully get what we were going for. And like I said, the third character really just was transactional. We're introduced to this person. Uh, they maybe are a little interesting. They're the son of a thief, and they, you know, are, are trying to be a little bit better, and they somehow were turned into an obsidian thread weaver. Uh, but they just kind of, like, make dumb decisions, and it all comes down to them accidentally doing the thing that uh, they wanted him to do anyway with breaking the core seal, and it's just like, whoops, I did it anyway, and that seemed to be his only purpose uh, in general. Also seems like that character died, um, unless they're going to somehow be brought back, which, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily be surprised, but it didn't seem like that was the case, so I just felt like that character was really, really... It only existed to get us from point A to B with that particular plot line. So I felt like that was pretty weak with the characterization as well. Uh, that said, it was the world building and the, the personal story of Chris that I thought were really, really well done. So this does set up a lot. And the end of the book most certainly has me intrigued to see what is going to come. Because it feels like it's going to get much, much larger in scale. And there was already a lot of interesting world building set up uh, with like the, the Fae forest and just the, the whole idea of these people who live up in the top of the trees and they keep completely secret because they're you know protecting the core seal and all that kind of thing like that was really cool and the chroma walls and just the flora and fauna in general seem very very interesting uh the kind of the political situation which isn't delved into a ton but we have this area of the emperor we have other areas that are run by like slum lords 
uh, the idea that even though most people have no idea, there are other kinds of thread weaving uh, that exist. So it was kind of the a really, really good balance of setting up enough stuff, doing enough world building, doing enough setup to, to have me very interested, and then like pulling the lid off and you're like, oh, look what's coming for book two. And so I, I thought that it was handled really well. And so that's where ultimately uh, I found myself, I, I did I did quite enjoy the book, uh, although I do think it, it had quite a few flaws. Uh, this definitely was not a perfect book, uh, and or a perfect book one even, but it was good, and I, I thought actually very good in parts, uh, while not being always consistently very good. Uh, so there were some issues, but it was very enjoyable, and, and like I said, I could not be... Uh, I could not be more intrigued for what's going to happen in book two and then later in book three because the things that this set up, uh, as long as they're delivered on, uh, I think this is going to be a series that I enjoy quite a lot, uh, even though I had some problems with this first book. So really, those are my thoughts on Voice of War by Zach Argyle, first book in the Threadlight. I'm still pretty sure it's a trilogy, but I haven't checked. Uh, so let me know your thoughts. Uh, if you agree, disagree, I, I know I chatted with some people in Discord already about the book, so you may already know my thoughts. Uh, but let me know in the comments uh, your thoughts if you agree, disagree with anything that I said. Always love to have that conversation. Make sure to give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Check the link in the description for the Wizardly Duo Discord if you want to chat this book, other books, or really anything at all. It is a lot of fun and we would love to have you. Of course, if you enjoy my content, make sure to subscribe. Thank you.